Okay, so in this video what I want to show you is how a Scotch Valley ties into an existing roof. Now, Scotch Valley is generally used when we want to extend an existing roof. It's not traditionally used for new construction. It does make uh, extending a hip roof uh, very easy. So here I've got my broken hip and valley roof from a previous video. And what I want to do is I'm going to extend another room, if you like, out in this area here. So the first thing I'm going to do is prepare the existing roof. So obviously you have to remove uh, as much of the lining as you need, or the, the tin or tile or whatever you've got on the roof. And I've had to cut back my rafters, cut the overhang off in this section. And you construct your walls, so I end up with my top plate. And now we're ready to start the Scotch Valley. So the first thing to do with the Scotch Valley, uh, obviously we need to mark out as we would for a hip roof. And you need to mark out your ceiling frame at the same time. Um, and once again, I'm going to get rid of the ceiling frame for most of this video. But just be aware, you need to do it in conjunction with your roof frame. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to take my common rafter for this span, the new span for the addition. And I'm going to use that to mark out the height of my ridge on my existing roof. So a common rafter, that'll give me my ridge height over here. And what we need to do is we need to throw in some blocking. Uh, because our ridge is not generally going to land on a rafter, it'll probably land in between most of the time. So we need to block out for that. So you could use a nice wide piece of timber like I have, a bit of 240. Or you could use a couple of pieces of 90 just to pick up the end of the ridge. I've also blocked down here where my valley is going to form to take uh, our Scotch Valley board uh, later on. And you'll see that later on. So I've blocked out for my ridge and then we can just start as we would with a traditional hip roof. We're going to put our common rafters in and we put our ridge in as well. So this time the ridge is actually going to come over and meet and we cut it off at the angle of the roof and just attach it to our block and otherwise it's just the same common rafters at this end. These ones are cut off because we don't need the overhang and pretty much uh, this build proceeds as per a hip roof so crown end rafter, hips, creepers now the next step, so it gets interesting, we need to tie it into here. So instead of actually cutting into the roof, all we're going to do is lay some boards on the roof, which, you know, the traditional valley material, if you like. So some wide, um, you know, it could be 200 mil wide, or generally about 20 mil thick. And it runs from the ridge down to the line of the, the wall plate. And then this is going to be become our pitching board. And that happens on both sides. Uh, the angles, you'll just have to sort of work out the angles as you go. There's no, um, none of the angles that we work out for the hip roof actually work as such. And you just have to cut them. Although the neatness and accuracy is not going to be a huge issue as long as we've got a board that runs most of that length. So then we need to put in our valley creepers. And they're just our short, shortened rafters. So this one here will have our plumb cut for our common rafter on this end. And down here we're going to have the level bevel of our common rafter. And we're going to have the edge bevel creeper to form this cut. And they're just put in at the, whatever the common spacing is. So these are in at 600 centers. So we just continue 600 centers along. Ended up with a very, very small one here, which is probably not be worth putting in. Okay, it doesn't matter whether these land in between the rafters or not. This uh, board will pick up and transfer the weight as needed. And you can see here the blocks that I put in earlier, they just pick up the end of our um, Scotch Valley board. Just so they've got a bit of support. And that's pretty much it. 
uh, pretty easy to do. Saves a lot of hassle actually having to cut out the existing roof, prop it, and and then try and rebuild it. We can just uh, tie in to an existing roof pretty easily. And as I said, very commonly used for extensions and renovations. And remember, with the ceiling frame in, uh, once again, this is low enough that we don't need to put a purl in and struts around. But if that was the case, you'd have to then go around and put in your struts and your purlins. So that's it. That's how a Scotch Valley roof works.